Hey folks, it's Nate, and today I've got a little bit of a product review for you. Got a set of lights in here that I think you might be interested in if you're in the look really cool but don't cost a ton of money sort of market for lights for your off-road vehicle. Um, I haven't powered these up yet or anything, so I'm not gonna talk too much about them yet. You're gonna learn about these lights along with me. What I can tell you is they're from a company called Supari. Obviously a uh, foreign Chinese company but uh, they do make some real, really good looking products at a much more affordable price than you might be used to in this, this industry. So uh, we're gonna open up this box. I'm gonna show you what's in here and uh, then we're gonna power them up and maybe put them through a couple of tests. And I've got some plans about how I'm gonna get them mounted on my Jeep because I do like how they look. And then maybe we can have a more long-term review after I've had them on there for a while and had a few trips on them. So stay tuned, we're gonna open up this box, show you what's inside. I just want to say that I was super concerned when these arrived because I picked up the box and heard this. Doesn't that sound like broken glass to you? So uh, I did open the box just to verify they were not broken, but beyond that, I haven't really inspected anything that's in here, except I did pull the lights out to see what that rattling was. So, you're pretty much going fresh with me here. So, um, they're packaged pretty well wrapped up in foam like you'd expect. And immediately I discovered the culprit of our noise. It's the mounting brackets. Really not anything to be concerned about at all. And uh, these are, let's, let's start there. This is a pretty thick, beefy looking bracket. If I squeeze on it, it doesn't really bend much and it doesn't lose its shape, which is something that some cheaper lights that I've come across have a problem with. It's got a nice beefy, bolt here that attaches the light to the the uh, the bracket there a smaller bolt for mounting it to your bumper or whatever and looks like some normal lock washers and nuts like you'd expect in here it all looks pretty solid uh, i have no idea how to tell if this stuff is going to rust over time or not but that's something we'll have to figure out as we go so that's the mounting bracket for one light and here is the light. Now you'll notice that these look a whole lot like a very popular off-road lights brand, um, but those lights are <laughs> like ridiculous expensive. And these are not. So you can tell these lights look pretty nice. They have a lot of spread to them. Part of the uh, information that's on their website says that they have a outward beam. I think they call it a three-facing light. Uh, but you can see there's little LEDs on the sides, and there's these in the center, and then I guess that in the middle maybe is a spot. I don't know. We're, we're going to see once we power them up. I have not powered these things on yet. Uh, they are rated for uh, water resistance, IP67. If you're not familiar with, with the IP rating uh, system, I will include a link in the description of the video to the rating system, but that means that they are dust-proof. They're rated to be resistant or, or uh, dust should not be able to get inside of the housing. And they are rated for immersion up to, I think it was one meter. So you can actually submerge these things up to a meter underwater and they shouldn't let water in. So I have some ideas on how we're going to actually test that because I would really like to test that. I can say that looking at the case and here I can look, bring, it, bring you a little closer, that it does look pretty solid. Now, I don't know if there's a gasket in here. I could, I suppose, take the light apart to show you, but that seems a little far. Uh, but I would guess that there's a gasket inside of this seam. And then on the back here where the wire goes in, you can see, maybe you can see, that it is rubberized all the way up to where that goes in there. And there's a little dimple here. I don't know what that's for. But it feels like it's got a rubber cap on it to keep it water resistant as well. It looks like a pretty nice housing for the light. Uh, like I said, this thing works with this bracket here. You can probably mount it upside down, right side up, however you want to do it. These lights will run you about a hundred bucks. Given what the state of our industry is nowadays, that is quite refreshing. Usually a good looking light, good quality, good looking light will run you five, 600 bucks for a pair of these things. Um, there are a lot of companies, of course, that make less expensive lights, but um, I, I like the price point on these and of course, there's a, ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it by pulling out of the box. Of course, there's a second set in here, or not a second set, a second light in here. There you go. And then they even gave me a sticker. 
a super re sticker. Although the sticker looks like it's a little peeled off. So maybe I'll stick that on the light somewhere or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm not in this, not going to do it in this video, but I think what I'm going to do is build a hoop for the front bumper that I built for the LJ and mount these on the hoop. But in this video, I have some ideas to actually test these out. Now you can see there's this center array of lights and then these side lights. And then there's a center daytime running light, they call it. There's three wires on the back here. If you go look at the product listing on their website, it shows you what the wires are for. Basically, if you connect the positive and negative, what you get are the normal driving light and the side shooters. If you connect the yellow, then you, and the yellow and the negative, of course, then you get the daytime running light, which is just the center. Their website shows that this will light up if you power the yellow and the rest of it will light up if you power the red, or you can power all of it at once. Now, I bought a switch panel that um, I'm going to power these with, so I think that I might actually wire them up separately. You could probably, I guess, twist the yellow and the red together and just have them all on at once if that's the way you want to operate these lights. It's nice to have some options like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I have an old car battery here. I'm going to make sure it's got enough juice left in it, and I'm going to... Show you how these lights look. So you can see, I'm gonna put my hand in front of it, right? You can see how much light that's shedding. And let me put it upright. That's kind of the upright position. You can see there's kind of a spot in the middle. I have no idea how this is coming out in the camera. The camera might just be blinded, I don't know. But that's both the running light and the body of the light. You know, the main, what do they call it? Driving light. Okay, this is the driving light only. So this is like the main body of the light. See it still has that spot in the center. It does have side, you know, sort of dispersion, I don't know what you call that, where those lights go off to the side there. So it's more like a flood, right? Okay, this is daytime running mode. You can see it's just like a laser focused directional thing. That's pretty crazy. That I honestly am not certain what purpose this would serve. <laughs> it's like a, if you're spotting deer, <laughs> maybe you'd use this. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see how bright this is if I look at it. Uh, I don't know if I would put that as a daytime running. Like, I don't know if I would even turn this on on the street. That looks really bright. I'm half blinded by it, just looking at it from here. From a distance, let's see. So this is like if I was an oncoming car. Oh my God, no. <laughs> I would not. No. This will get you pulled over. Don't, don't turn this on on the highway. All right, so I got my old, my kid's old hermit crab tank. I mean, uh, pray for the hermit crabs. They killed them all. Kids are wonderful. All right, so um, got the light here. Got my car battery and my super sophisticated setup. What I'm going to do is I've got just enough water in here, I think, that I should be able to dunk this without submerging my connections. So here we go. Okay, so now it's submerged. We're going to power it on. It's going to blind me when I do so because it's pointed like straight at my face, but that's okay. It's all for the channel, guys, when I'm blind and old. Then uh, you can remember this video. Okay, so there, we should have the whole thing lit. My God, the reflections are killing me. The, uh, the center running light and the main body of the light, they're all lit. I'll put them back underwater here, make sure that my connection doesn't get submerged because I don't want it to be. And uh, the wires are underwater, although, you know, the thing's full of air, so it's kind of buoyant. That's okay. We're going to let it sit for a little while. Not terribly long. I'm going to let it sit, powered on for a little bit. We're going to see what happens. Hey, it's still on. It didn't catch fire or something. Let's... Let's see here. It's not warm which I didn't expect it to be, but I wanted to check anyway. My wife has graciously 
given me an old thing of potting soil. But what could we possibly do with potting soil in this test, you, you might be asking. And I think this should be obvious pretty quickly. This is like super dry. <laughs> so, um, you know, the obvious thing when you're testing an IP rating is, does it let water in? But I want to see if we put it in mud, what happens. And I have no idea if this is going to have the result that I want, but we're going to find out. I feel like we could do better, but uh, this is what we've got. All right, so now um, we've got some, uh, some dust all over the light, so that's cool. Um, we're just going to put it back in the water, see what happens. Nasty, mucky water. See, you can see it doesn't coat the light like I was hoping. You know, that would be a much more dramatic thing. But we could see how bright it is through this mucky water. That might be fun. Can you see it? No, not really. <laughs> I, I can't blame, I can't blame the light on that. Let's see if we turn the lights off. See, I figure that uh, at least some of us, I'm not really a mud guy, but some people, they're going to end up in situations where these things get submerged in muddy water. Yeah, the water's muckier than you think it is when you look at it with the light. Hang on, I'll show you. You can see here that the light is uh, definitely submerged. It's definitely muddier than... Could have been, right? See, there's the light still shining bright. So yeah, pretty cool. I think it's uh, holding up pretty well to my riggers here. It's only been in there a minute or so. Just kind of long enough for me to get some footage. Maybe it was more like a couple of minutes, but there you go. Bright as ever. Now, it's muddy and it's still on. Let me super technical uh, light switch over there. You want to have a look at it? Come on over. You can see it is definitely muddy, mucky. I do not see any evidence of water inside of that lens. So I think what I'm going to do is rinse it off and then stick it out in the sun for a little while. So there it is sitting on the roof of the LJ. It is quite sunny outside. So uh, yeah, we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Let it get good and warm. See if it fogs up. All right, let's uh, go outside. It's been out there on the roof of the Jeep for, I don't know, half an hour or so. I don't have all day for this, right? I just want you to know there's nothing weird going on here. I, uh, I did check on it once. Sorry, the Jeep's uh, charging, that's what you hear. Uh, there you go, yeah, my ancient charger. Now I got no, no hands free. Here we go. Okay, so, um, well here, let me show you on the better camera. Okay, so the idea here was I wanted to show you the light up close. Now there is speckling from the mud, that's to be completely expected. It's still a little damp, just because it hasn't been out there long enough to really dry. But it has evaporated quite a bit of the water that was on it off. I don't see any evidence of any moisture inside that lens. Now, is this indicative of months and years of ownership? No. This is one submersion test, well, Three submersion tests, technically. One with it off, one with it on, and one in the mud. And, um, you know, 
that's only, it's not like these have been really abused at this point. There's, it's still a pretty, pretty new light. So I think what I'm going to have to do is come back with a longer term review once I have some longer term with these lights. Now, in the next couple of videos, what I'm going to do is make a mount. I'm going to mount these things on my front bumper on the LJ. The downside of putting them on the LJ is that it sits in this garage most of its life. It only goes out for the trails. So it's probably going to be a little while before I can get you a good long-term review on these in order to actually get some miles on them and say, I've truly done a long-term review. Sitting in the garage isn't a long-term review. They need to be outside in the elements, out on the trail, out in the sun, hitting, you know, getting hit by brush and whatever else that I put the LJ through. So that's all going to have to take some time, but I will come back with a longer term review on these things. What do you think? What would you put these lights through? Tell me in the comments and I will try to expose them to some more abuse. Now, keep in mind, I do like these lights and I really don't want to destroy them. So don't tell me to like shoot them or something because I will not do that because that's not normal abuse. I'm talking, if you can think of something that would simulate an off-road environment or simulate, I don't know, anything that's reasonable for an off-road light to go through that I can actually do in my shop at home. I, I could imagine like a vibration test. I don't know if I have a way to do that. Put them, put them in my dryer? No, that'd be a bad idea. Supari, S-U-P-A-R-E-E. -E. I'll put a link in the description. They have a bunch of different lighting solutions. They have these lights, they have other lights, they have headlights, they have fog lights, all kinds of stuff. Uh, like I said, they do look nice. They're a nice looking light. You've seen this thing plenty in the video at this point. Uh, the question in my mind is still, how do they hold up? I have a good feeling about them. They seem well made. Uh, will this finish chip off over time? I don't know. Will the seal that, that seals the housing hold up over time? I don't know. It seems like a decent light. I am really tempted to take one apart. So folks, you've uh, convinced me. I mean, not that you actually had any say in it. I've convinced myself that I want to try to open this thing up and see. Now this is the one I did not submerge. Okay, so that's the outer housing. Let's see if I can get a look at the bottom of it without losing any screws. Okay, there's no rubber seal there, but that's okay because the lens, yes, there's a rubber seal down there. So here's the lens, nice and clean. Down in here, you can't see it, but this backing here, this rim around, this black ring, that's a rubber seal. And there's the rest of the light fixture now. I'm not gonna take it apart any further than this, but you can see there, there's the seal. Now what I could do is take the one that I just submerged apart and we can see if there's any water inside of it. What do you think? Does that sound like a fun thing to do? What I'm trying to do here is make sure the outside of the housing where the seams are is as gunk-free and dry as it can be so that we don't get any false uh, you know water inside when I open the case because that would give us it would look like there's water inside when there's not basically and we don't want that we want this to be as true as possible Okay, there is some water at the edges there still, so that must have gotten... Okay, so we haven't pulled off the cover yet. The important thing is going to be, is there any water in where the lights are? Okay, now you can see there's water at the edges. I should have waited till this was 100% dry before I did any of this. But here we are. Okay, 
Now, there's no water that's left that can run in completely dry. I see no water. There's no water inside of there. So yeah, are they waterproof? Well, are they IP67 up to a meter? Well, I didn't dunk it a meter, but I did have it submerged for quite a while. I'm going to say yes. Yes, it is. Thank you, Super E, for actually providing me a product that meets the, uh, the spec that you say it meets. Awesome. Okay, so I'm not going to put this back together right away because I want to make sure that that housing is completely dry before I do. Uh, but there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, link in the description if you want to buy a set of these. Uh, I'll also put a link to the IP rating uh, system so that you can learn a little bit more about what those IP numbers mean. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I can't wait to get these things put onto the LJ and, uh, you know, really give them a, a good test and uh, kind of add to the look, you know, because why else do you put on lights, right? I don't night wheel. That's why I don't have lights. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs>